Dear Heavenly Father, I ask so very much that you definitely lead this video. I ask, Lord, that anything and everything that I share comes from you. It is something you have laid on my heart. Again, Lord, I want to lead everyone to you. I am just your vessel, and I am so thankful that you have chosen me for such a time as this to share these videos. I am so thankful you laid it upon my heart. But again, Lord, I only ask to share what you want me to share. Your word, your wisdom, your strength, your courage, your passion for us. Through all of that, only then will you use me to bring others to you. And I'm so thankful that you have, a, have such faith in me and such belief in me that you have bestowed this upon me. And I ask, Lord, for each and every person who may be struggling in this way, each and every person who may be nonchalantly going, hmm, whatever, I ask, Lord, that you touch their heart, and I ask that you remove the blinders from their eyes, and may they truly see exactly how this is destroying their families. Lord, there are no secrets from you. You are all knowing. I ask that you be with those people. Remove those blinders. Help them to know who you are and all that you have for them. Give me strength, Lord, to continue with this video. Give me everything that I need to share to bring these people to you. Amen. Yeah, this, yeah, sorry about that. That's who I am. All right, some of you know my story. Some of you do not know my story. I am not going to get into my story here. But there are tidbits throughout this study that if you've been putting them together or if God has been talking to you, he has basically led you to know my story. Okay? For those of you who are going through this, for those of you who are struggling with this, for those of you who, who truly believe that you have control over it and it does not have control over you, I pray that God will remove those blinders from you. I pray that you are able to see exactly how you are destroying your family with these things. Lord, just help me, please. Proverbs 2, verse 16. Wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman and her seductive words. Let me explain something to you from my personal point of view, for what God lays on me as I go through this extremely important chapter, I feel. This is not just for the men, this is for the women. And it is not just for the adulterous man and the adulterous woman. It is not just for the man's words and the woman's words. It is not for just the way they seductively talk to you. This is for the modern technology world where all of you are sitting there on your computer watching pornography and inviting that stuff into your house. Sex, drugs, alcohol. Which one? All three? Pornography, sex, adulterous women. You're being in an, you're in an adulterous situation. Well, guess what? I'm not sure who's the one who initiated it. And I'm not sure who the one is who, who chased it the most. But if you're in that adulterous relationship and you think, oh, they're going to leave their spouse and they're going to come join and unite with you, what in the world makes you think that they're not going to cheat on you? You guys just cheated on, on your spouses that you were given. For me, personally, I, I don't see how that makes for a firm foundation in a relationship. For those of you who are in your marriage, if you want to prevent this from happening, or at least do your best to help it to never occur, 
You better take a look at what you have. You better be thankful for what you have. You better treasure every moment. I've heard it said that if you are struggling in your relationship, go write a letter. Go answer some very important questions. Why did you fall in love with this person in the first place? What is it that attracted you to this person in the first place? What is it that made you commit however much time that you guys have been together? Don't let Satan in there. Don't let him come in there and kill, steal, and destroy that from you. This is your family you're talking about. If he can come in there and destroy a husband and a wife, if he can come in and destroy parents and children's relationships, and, and the two of you have gone off and, and started this adulterous relationship, what in the world makes you think that the two of you aren't going to go out there and do it again? Hmm? I don't know what you like. I don't know your preferences. I'm, I'm not here to really, quote unquote, preach to the choir. I'm not really out here to, you know, beat you over the head. I'm here to help you think. Because nine times out of ten, the only reason you're in the adulterous relationship to begin with is because you're not getting what you need or what you think you need at home. Well, guess what? If you're not getting it, you're probably not giving it. Sit down, figure it out. Write it out on a piece of paper. Why did you fall in love with him or her in the first place? What attracted you to him or her in the first place? Where is the intimacy that you two once had? There's a tear. Remember, I've said it in previous videos. You have God first, because the two become one. God first, then your spouse, then your family, i.e. your children, or whoever God has brought to you for children. Then it is your work, and then everything else falls underneath that. So, have you put your work before your spouse? Have you made them feel unnecessary? Have you made them feel like dirt? Have you, I mean, have you so much so put your job before your spouse that you're not even willing to take a weekend away to work on the relationship? I know from experience that it takes both with God. I did my best for years going to counseling by myself, putting into action the things the counselors recommended for me to put into action, and I still lost my second husband. His choice, not mine. You guys better grab a hold of the wisdom. And for those of you who are in this current situation or even thinking about going there, I pray God send someone to throw you off the path. I pray for your spouse who is probably currently at home crying their eyes out, praying fervently for you. And I pray that God will hear those words. And I pray God will turn you from whatever it is that you're about to do and turn you back to him. War room, people. A very good movie. Go get it. Watch it over and over and over again. I cannot get enough of that movie. Fireproof. Another good movie. Go get it. Watch it over and over and over again until it is written on your heart. Courageous. Another awesome movie. Another one to watch over and over and over again. Yes, movies are great. They're wonderful to be entertained with. I challenge you to step outside the box and find out what exactly God is trying to tell you through all those movies.
not going to go there. Wisdom, people. Wisdom. We all need to keep with the wisdom. God will send you people. He will send you places. And he will send you things. Guess what? You went out there to, I don't know, begin your adulterous relationship, to watch your pornography or whatever, and I, I don't know, whatever. Uh, unfortunately, there's a car accident and it delays you from getting there. And the other person leaves before you get there. Guess what? That's God intervening. He doesn't want you there. You suddenly get sick to your stomach and, and you don't understand why. God doesn't want you there. God will use whatever means necessary to get your attention. But again, it is your choice. I can't make you stop. So and so can't make you stop. The only thing we can do is plant the seeds, water the seeds, weed the field, and prayerfully, hopefully, God will allow for the harvest. It's our jobs. That's what we do. Okay, 216. An adulteress is a seductive woman or a prostitute. Two of the most difficult sins to resist are pride and sexual immorality. Both are seductive. Pride says, I deserve it. Sexual desire says, I need it. In combination, their appeal is deadly. In fact, says Solomon, only by relying on God's strength can we overcome them. Pride appeals to the empty head. Fill your head with the right stuff. <sighs> Sexual enticement to the empty heart. By looking to God, we can fill our heads with his wisdom and our hearts with his love. Do not be fooled. Remember what God says about who you are and what you were meant to be. Ask him for strength to resist these temptations. Wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman, with our seductive words. Where is your wisdom? His word. Again, I go back to other previous videos. There are many a times where I've had to recite the Lord's Prayer over and over and over again all day long. There are times I am laying in bed at night where I have had to say the Lord's Prayer over and over and over again because Satan was full on attacking me. Get yourself right with God. He wants that, that intimate relationship you're trying to have. Thank you. That intimate relationship that you are trying to have with the adulterous woman or the adulterous man. Hello? God's intimate relationship with you is tenfold what that ever could be. Do you hear me? What you think you're going to receive by having this adulterous relationship, oh, you don't understand, my wife or husband don't love me anymore. From the wayward woman with her seductive words, oh, baby, come on over, whatever, blah, 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 I don't know what they say. God's relationship with you, his intimate relationship with you, is tenfold what that will ever be. I'm sorry, but I'm a child of God, and I prefer to have the best of everything. And if that means laying in bed every night saying the Lord's Prayer over and over and over again, or I'm in a situation during the day and saying the Lord's Prayer over and over and over again, for goodness sakes, that's what I'm going to do. So get out there and do it. It's your family. Protect it.